Hello crafty friends, my name is Alicia but you can call me Crafty Al. And in today's video I'm going to be putting together my very first set of cards using the April 2023 sheet load of cards. I hope you'll stick around, see how they're created and get a few tips along the way. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Yesterday, I debuted the April 2023 sheet load of cards and told you how you could download it for free if you're a subscriber to my channel. If you haven't yet seen that video and after today's you do want to download this, I have a link to the debut video in the description box below. Not only will I be sharing my process today, but my team of collaborators will be sharing their videos here on YouTube and their posts over on Instagram. Now to see the YouTube videos, there's a few different options you have. There is a hashtag in the title that some of the times will bring up all the videos. But if you find out that that's not working how it should, as soon as the videos go live and I have time, I will add them to a playlist which is linked in the description box below. That way you'll have them all in one place, but you might need to give me a little bit to get that done. But if you're too quick for that playlist, I also have everybody's links in the description box below so you could go straight to their channel and find it. Now to see what they've created over on Instagram, I do have a link to the hashtag search so you can click on that and go see what they've created. I know that everybody would love for you to stop by, see what they made, and leave them some love. Before we move on, I did want to point out a couple special things about the April 2023 printable. It is an A2 card, which is pretty normal, but we are going to be using 6x6 six six paper and there will not be a bit of scrap left over from that. So we're going to be using two pieces of 6x6 six six paper, cutting them up completely, and then we'll make six cards total. Now, if you don't have 6x6 six six paper, you could always cut down 12x12, 12 12, or you could use that full sheet of 12x12 12 12 and make a sheet load of more cards. You'll just need to add some more cardstock, of course. Let's go ahead and take a look at the main supplies I'll be using today. Last week, my friend Danny gifted me with this adorable mini muse stamp set from Craft and Kimmy Stamps, and I just knew I had to use it on the new sheet load of cards. So luckily, as I was looking through my 6x6 paper, I found Playful Pets from DCWV, and I pre-chose two of the patterns. For my mats and my card bases, I decided to go with some color today. Normally I would keep it like white with one accent color, but I decided to take some of the colors from the cat paper and find card stocks to go with them. So I got out Turquoise Sea from Gina K Designs and Pumpkin from Tailored Expressions. Now I will be adding some more tools and supplies as I get into the process and I'll be sure to let you know about those. But as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! To get started, I'm going to be cutting the two pieces of pattern paper per the cutting guide instructions. This is a pretty easy one. You cut your piece in quarters and one of those quarters you cut down a little bit smaller. Since my pattern paper does have that extra strip at the top with the hanging hole, mine might look a little bit different than your cutting. Instead of cutting the piece in half and then in half the other way, I cut two rows from the bottom that were three inches tall and then I rotated both of those and together cut them in half at three inches wide. 
Now you can choose any one of those squares and you're going to cut it into three pieces that are one inch wide each. Now these pieces do get a little bit small so I brought in some scotch removable tape to help me hold them. And you'll want to make sure when you make all of these cuts that you don't do what I call generous cutting which might be cutting it a little bit larger than the measurement because you do need that whole six inches always you'll want to make sure you cut right at the measurement or maybe even a tad under. Once those were all cut, I brought in my cardstock for CS1, which is the mat, and I needed one full sheet and a scrap. You'll notice that the heights of the pieces on the cutting guide are different. I'm going to start by cutting along the 11 inch side at three and a quarter, and then along that same side at four and a half. I do have some cardstock scraps left over that you'll see me use later. Once those are done, I then take both of those larger pieces that I cut and cut them to the final size of four and a half by three and a quarter. Now out of one piece of cardstock, I got five mats, but we do need six. So out of the scrap I brought in, I cut one more at that same size. This month's sketch does suggest using a colored cardstock base, so I did decide to stray from my normal plain white one. To get the card bases, I cut each of the three sheets in half at five and a half by eight and a half, and then you could totally just fold these with your hands, but I did go ahead and bring in my mini score buddy and score and reinforce that fold with the bone folder. The next step might be to cut CS2 for the sentiment, but at this point I really didn't know what I was going to do, so I am holding off on that for now. What I am going to move on to is getting my pattern papers onto their orange mat. Since there are only two patterns, I just switched those quickly on my desktop, and then I started putting them together. The one inch strip gets adhesive added to the back and then it gets placed to the left side of that orange mat with about an eighth of an inch on the top left and bottom. Now you'll notice here when I go to add adhesive to my square, there is a fun pattern on back and you can definitely always mix and match the fronts if your papers are double sided. This square piece goes to the right side of the mat and again about an eighth of an inch on the top right and bottom. Now between the two there is a little more space and some of that will be taken up later with our sentiment and our image but you could always add ribbon there if you wanted to or something else. Definitely make sheet load your own. While I work on matting the rest of these pieces I thought it would be a great time to stop by with a special announcement. I recently had some channel members reach one year of channel membership, so I wanted to take a minute to recognize them. You'll see their name scrolling up on screen. Thanks so much to each and every one of you as well as all of my channel members. You keep me creating here on YouTube and sheet load of cards free for all subscribers. If you're ever interested in finding out more about the perks of channel membership, I do have a link in the description box below or you can click on the join button below this video for more information. Once those were all matted, it was time to get them put onto the card bases. Now this would be a place where you could add some dimension if you wanted by putting these on with foam tape, but I'm going to go ahead and just use my ATG and adhere them flat down to the center of the card front. You could also rotate this piece so the square is on the left. That is up to you. I continued adding these pieces until all six were adhered to card bases. Now it's time to do some stamping and because I will be doing multiple of the same image, I brought in my Misty. 
I will end up coloring in my kitty cats with Spectrum Noir Tri-Blend markers. So I'm using Memento Tuxedo Black Ink and some Nina Solar White cardstock. I chose three of the images from the set and I set those up in a row onto my piece of cardstock. So I'm going to ink them up twice and stamp them just to get a nice solid black. And then all I have to do is move my cardstock up enough so that I can stamp that second row. I did keep in mind that I wanted enough space between to cut them out later with my brother scan and cut. By this time I had decided what I wanted to do for my sentiment and I was sticking pretty much to what the sketch suggests. I was inspired by some of those leftover cardstock strips and I will end up using this later to give kind of a mat to my sentiment piece. I placed my stamp set onto the Misty to use the ruler and kind of figured out well how wide of a piece would I need that would allow my sentiment to fit as well as one of the cat images to the left of it. I ended up cutting some white cardstock scraps that were 4 inches wide and about 5 eighths of an inch tall. Because these were kind of small to hold on to my Misty with a magnet, I did bring in the Brutus Monroe stick and stamp mat to help me hold the pieces in place while I stamped. I chose three different sentiments from the set and I was going to stamp each one twice. I got one in place, I kind of put it to the right of the cardstock strip, and then I got that inked up with Versafine this time since it's nice for, you know, detailed or sentiments, and I got that stamped on two different pieces. Then between those I cleaned off my stamp and then I set the next one up and I just kept up this process until I had six total sentiments. Off camera I cut down some orange scraps, they were the same 5 8 inches tall, but I did end up cutting them about 4 and 1 8 inches wide because I knew it needed to be a little bit longer than the white. I put a white cardstock sentiment and one of the orange pieces together and I cut an angle in the right end. Once that was done, I added some adhesive to the back and then I got those two pieces put together. I just really like how that helps that stand out and adds a little more interest. I continued cutting and adhering these until all six sentiment strips were ready. These pieces did need to be cut down just a little bit for the card fronts, so I brought in my Fiskars Photo Trimmer and I cut them so the very tip of the white cardstock was 4 inches wide. When I use alcohol markers, I do like to give my images some time to dry and the cats were definitely ready to be colored up now. I'll be using Spectrum Noir Tri-Blend markers and I'll list the individual colors below. And I took inspiration from the cats on the pattern paper to color each of mine up. I am going to show you here my first kitty, which is a little bit of a calico. I'll share the process, but if you don't want to watch it, you could skip forward probably about a minute. I colored the rest of these off screen and then used my brother's scan and cut to die cut them out. Also while I was off screen I added foam tape to the back of each of my cats. I stamped some white cardstock pieces for the inside personal message 
and some vellum circles. I thought these would help the cat stand out from that pattern paper, but then you could still see through it. To put a card together, I added adhesive to the back of the sentiment and then placed my vellum circle behind it. This then got placed onto the card front and you could definitely adjust here how far up you want it to go on the card. And then before I put on my foam tape piece, I added adhesive to the back of the inner card and got that centered inside. Then I can remove the release tape from my cat and get that popped up. I just love the little kitties. For the remaining five cards, I put them together in more of an assembly line fashion. I added all of the inner cards to the inside. Then I added all of the vellums to the back of the sentiments. These pieces then got added to the card fronts. And finally, I popped up all my cats. And here are some close-up looks at the finished cards. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together my first set of cards using the April 2023 sheet load of cards. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Now don't forget to go visit all of the collab team creations by clicking either on the hashtag in the title or the links in the description box below. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.